in the previous video, we went over example one, two, and the steps for quadratic equations. Now remember, we know an equation is a quadratic equation when you see an x squared, like in these, or when you distribute or multiply and it gives me an x squared, like in these two over here. We went over the steps when you know that an equation is a quadratic equation. Let's apply these to the next few questions. Okay, example three. Remember, example one and two are done in the previous video, worth watching if you haven't seen it. How do we know if it's a quadratic equation? Well, I see an x squared. So you see an x squared, or if you distribute, you can get an x squared. So it is quadratic. Get into standard form. Remember, this means that you must make the equation equal to zero. So 2x squared, the opposite of plus 4x, adding 4x is subtracting 4x. If you subtract 4x on both sides, so you subtract it on this side over here, you can see it there now. If you subtract it on this side over here, it's going to give you zero. So you've now made the equation equal to zero. There we go. That's standard form. And descending powers of x, it just means that put x squared first and then x to the power of 1 next after that. Okay, the x's go down. 2, 1, the powers, the exponents. Done. Factorize. Very, 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 very important. Once you've gotten it to the stage, and this is what people actually struggle with, knowing that you must, absolutely must, make it equal to 0. You have to. You don't have a choice. Once you get it to the stage, then if you're not to factorize, the rest is easy. So take a look at my expression over here. I need to factorize. Try highest common factor first. It's the most important type of factorizing. So two terms there and there. What can I take out? I can take out a 2x. If you need further help with factorizing, I have a whole playlist linked down below. If I take out a 2x, divide the first term by 2x, you left with x divide the second term by 2x, you're left with negative 2. Remember, you can always distribute this back in to check if you get this. If you do, you factorized it correctly. So I have factorized mine correctly. Then once you've done this, so once you've factorized it, so done with step three, make each bracket or each piece equal to zero. Now, what do I mean by each bracket or each piece? This is a bracket x minus 2. And this here, it's not in a bracket, so I'm just calling it a piece. So we're going to take this piece, 2x, we're going to make that equal to 0. So it's going to be 2x is equal to 0. Or, we do the or method, put the or in between. We take this x minus 2, and we make that equal to 0. Like that. Then we solve each equation. So inverse operation of times 2 is divide by 2. 0 divided by 2 is 0. Or, inverse operation of minus 2, it's going to be 0 plus 2, which is positive 2. There we go. And now we've solved our equation. And remember what I said in the previous video? The or doesn't mean that these you can choose between these options. You have to have both of them. It means that both of these solutions are acceptable solutions for this particular equation. Now, what a lot of students do incorrectly when they see this in the exam is they think that it is okay to divide both sides of the equation by 2, okay? So then you're left with x squared equals 2x, and then divide both of the sides by x. Then you're left with x is equal to 2. Do you see that if you do this horrible shortcut method, it's very, very wrong, it's very, very incorrect. What you're doing is you're only getting one of the solutions, by dividing both sides of the equation by x, you are basically chucking away one of your solutions. So I need you to think about it as you are taking your marks, not just the incorrect solution. You get marks for both solutions. You're taking your marks and you're going, whoop, you're throwing it away. We cannot do bad maths like this. It's bad maths, terrible maths. You will lose most of your marks if you do this. So that's why the first step is so important. If you recognize that it is a quadratic equation by looking for the x squared, your first step is making it equal to zero. You have to do this. Now, with example four, I know that I keep saying quadratic equation is if you see x squared. And if you look at this, you might think, huh, I don't see an x squared. Therefore, this is not quadratic. Remember, I said it's not only if you see an x squared, but if you had to multiply out x times x, that gives you x squared. I'm not going to distribute the rest because it's not what I'm supposed to do. But if you had to distribute, it would give you an x squared, which means that this is indeed a quadratic equation. And remember, your second step for a quadratic equation is get into standard form. Make it equal to zero. It's already equal to zero. 
and then we're going to factorize. It has already been factorized. There's no need to factorize. There's one term on the side, which means that it has essentially already been factorized. So this, if you see this question in your exam, you must actually say, yes, this is so easy because all that I need to do now is I need to take each piece or each bracket and make it equal to zero. So you're going to go X minus three equals zero. Do the or method or X plus two equals zero. So opposite of minus three, plus three, opposite of plus two, minus two. That's it. That's as easy as it gets. So basically in this example, which they do ask in exams, they've already done step one to three for you. All you need to do is step four and five. That's it. Now, what I see a lot of students doing, which is wrong, is they think that when they get this in the exam, they must distribute or do the FOIL method or binomial times binomial method and get this. But now if you do that, what are you going to do now? Do you see what the issue is? When you get to this stage, now you see that there's an x squared and you say, oh, cool, it's an x squared. It's in standard form. So now I must factorize. And if you factorize, you're just going to get right back to where you started. So don't do that. Okay, last example. Remember what I said from the third example. Very, very important. As soon as you see x squared, you need to get it into standard form. So 3x squared opposite of plus 48 is negative minus 48. You've got it into standard form. It is now equal to zero. Then we need to factorize. Highest common factor is the one that we must always try first. Can I take something out of these terms? Yes, I can take out a three. You're left with x squared minus 16 equals zero. Very important. If you had to multiply this back in, it gets you here. If you are awake and if you are good at your factorizing, you will say, ma'am, you're not done factorizing. You can do dots over here. If you said that, well done, you are correct. I've got two terms, minus in between, square number, and even exponent. So it's going to be x plus 4, x minus 4. Remember, our factorizing help in the description if you need it. Now, what you do is you look, you see, have I factorized fully? Yes, I've only got one term here, and I can't factorize more than that, so I'm done. And then what you do next is, according to my steps, you make each bracket or each piece equal to zero. But what I need you to understand about something like this is, yes, you can say x plus 4 equals zero or x minus 4 equals zero, but the three over there, what happens to that? You can't say three is equal to zero because it's not. That's ridiculous. That's, that's not true. So what you can do is you can get rid of the three first. It's being multiplied by three over here. So we can divide by three on this side, divide by three on this side. If you divide by three here, the threes are going to go away. You're going to get that. And if you divide zero, divide by three, try it on your calculator. If you don't believe me, you get zero. Then you do the all method. X plus four equals zero or X minus four equals zero. X is equal to negative four or x is equal to positive 4. And then we've solved our quadratic equation correctly. I really, really hope that this has been helpful. Please remember to check out the link in the description box below for more maths resources on my website, more on my channel for equations, and I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye, everyone.